All right, so now we're going to organize our desktop a little bit and we're going to work on lists, bulleted lists. So in the past, we just had this file on our desktop and I think I might get a little bit more organized here. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a new folder and this could be in your documents or it can be in here, but I'm going to do a, a CIS 130 just to get things organized a little bit better. And I'm gonna move Hello World into that CIS 130. So I'm gonna put all of the projects that I do during the semester here inside my CS 130 folder. And now I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code and I want to start a new project because I'm kind of done with the Hello World project. And I want to kind of demonstrate how we do that. So I'm going to file and I'm going to do a new open a folder. Remember, there's no such thing as new. We're going to go into open and create a folder. So I'm going to go to my desktop and now I have the CIS 130 folder. There's my hello world folder. So I'm going to create a new folder for this project, for this demonstration of lists. And I'm going to call this recipe, recipe. And I'm going to create a recipe website in this uh in this folder. So remember a folder is a project and I'm creating a new website theoretically. So it's gonna have its own folder and subsequently it's gonna have its own files and images and all of those kinds of things. So yes, I trust the authors. I'm going to close this start starter welcome on startup tab. And I'm gonna create a new page. So I'm gonna come here to new file. I have my recipe project open and I think I spelled recipe right. And I'm going to make an index. Remember, we always start off with an index.html. We're going to think of that as our home page. Um, HTML hint is giving me this little idea that doc type must be declared first. And in order to simplify things, I'm using Emmet. So I'm going to use the explanation point and tab to create my, uh, my index. Helps me out a little bit. And this is going to be my recipe uh, website. A site. Excellent. All right. And now I've started, I'm going to do an H1, H1 uh, recipes, recipes, recipes. I guess that's what I need to go to school is to learn how to spell recipes. Excellent. All right. And just to reiterate everything, I'm going to right click and open in default browser and I'm going to show my recipes and there's my title. And so I'm now ready to get started on the learning opportunity, which is going to be ordered lists and unordered lists. All right, so I'm going to utilize W3Schools. Seems like a good place to start. W3Schools, schools.com. Excellent. And I'm going to get it to try and help me here. I don't really know much about lists, so I can always use this search tool. I'm going to type in lists to try and figure out what it is that I'm trying to accomplish here. So I'm gonna ignore all of the ads and I'm gonna come down here to the thing that says HTML list, which is uh, URL is included in W3Schools. I lost that for some reason. So I'm gonna click on that. All right, so here it talks about lists and we have unordered lists, which gives us these uh, bulleted lists. We also have ordered lists, which gives us one, two, three. So we're gonna explore the differences between those two. And of course, here are examples of each of those. And we are going to do those in our, uh, our sample here. So here's examples with try it yourselves. We're gonna do the unordered list first. So I also have that choice down here. So I can click on unordered list, which is gonna give me a page with more detail of unordered lists. And there is lots of different things that we can choose from. We're gonna learn about this right here. In subsequent uh, pages, this, in a subsequent lesson, this is called CSS, which is gonna give us our uh, specific styles. Um, but we're gonna learn about that soon enough. So right now I'm just kind of asking you to ignore that. And here is an unordered list. So turns out, let me click on try it yourself, that that is gonna generate for us using this UL and LIs, some bullets, bullet points, excellent, all right. So I can copy and paste that in because I can, or I can just come in here and I'm going to um, type it in manually. So I think I'll start off with an H3 tag, H3 tab, and I'm going to say recipe, recipe for peanut butter, peanut butter cookie. Excellent. All right. And so if I look at the documentation, which is actually right here, 
That makes it a little bit easy to see. It looks like I start off with a parent tag of UL. So I'm going to do a UL tab and enter so uh, that I can have some space in between the open and closing UL tag. And each bullet is represented with the LI list item, for example, LI for list item, LI tab. And in here, I'm going to have one cup of sugar. And then I'll do another one, LI, and I'm going to have one cup of peanut butter butter and then we'll have one more that is an li and that'll be one egg excellent okay so now i have this page still open here in my browser i think i do anyway there we go and so i can simply it automatically saved i don't have the dot i have the x so i can refresh and now i have bulleted lists of my uh, starting of my peanut butter recipe all right, so let's look at an unordered list then. I mean, sorry, an ordered list. So if that was an unordered list, let's look at ordered lists. Ordered lists, I have an OL. So it looks identical, except it has the word OL, the tag OL instead of UL. Seems good. And then this is different ways that you can create your OL. So if you give it a type, which is optional, notice we don't have type here. <clears throat> You can give it, here's more information, so always read the documentation. The important part of this is, and the reason why I take you to W3 schools, is I don't expect you to memorize all this stuff. You never want to be a memorization when it comes to any kind of programming, but learning how to look it up and read the documentation to take out the things or implement what you want out of that particular uh, scenario. In this case, if I wanted to, let's see, type equals one, if I added that attribute type equals one, then it would be, uh, the list items would be numbered with numbers. Now, since that's the default, that is optional. So I don't have to have it in. It'll automatically do numbers unless, and that's kind of what we see up here. So these will be generated with numbers. There is no type equals. So that's generating a list, an ordered list with numbers. If we instead put type equals A, then it'll be uppercase letters A, B, C, lowercase letters little case A, B, C, et cetera. So those are different ways that you can use the OL. So I'm just going to use this simple plan right here, and we're going to generate then an OL. So I'll use Emmet with an OL and a tab. I spelled OL wrong. There we go. And then I'll generate an LI. And here I will say preheat, preheat the oven to 350 degrees. And then I think I'll also just paste in some LIs that I already have in memory there. And so now I'm generating an ordered list. And so I will be able to come back into my web page, refresh, and now I see that ordered list. All right, so let's validate this just to make sure that everything validates. Remember, we have this little validator down here that we installed through our extension. So I'm going to double check to make sure that I have, in fact, done everything correctly. Syntactically, everything is correct. This HTML file is valid. Excellent. All right, so... I want to show you some things that something that I see students do that is an easy beginner mistake. And that would be, for example, wouldn't it be make more sense if I put this H3 tag, for example, inside the UL? Because really I'm making an H3 header for this list, right? And so if I do this, let me put, try and put these side by side. So if I generate these, if I refresh my page, it's still working. And so this is a good example of even though it's working, it doesn't make it okay. What do you mean by that? Well, let me click on this W3C validation. And when I do, it tells me that I've got an error. What is my error? Well, it's pointing here to this H3. And it says, if you read this little pop-up, H3 is not allowed as a child of element UL in this context. So the only thing that can be a child of a UL is an LI. So this is invalid. Even though it's still displaying in the browser, the browser does everything it can to fix your mistakes. That doesn't make it okay. So in this case, this does not validate. This is not syntactically correct, and it doesn't belong here. So the only thing that can be a child of a UL is an LI. Now, if for some reason you wanted to put this and, and I don't know why you would, but it's just the example I have in my head. If you wanted to put a child inside an LI. 
if for some reason, let me do this just so it's a little clear, it makes it a little bit easier to read, right? So this is a child of an LI. Well, that will validate. So you can make anything you want to add to an LI, you can do it. See how this validates. And it doesn't really make sense in this context. And it's still a bullet, right? So I don't know that this is really makes sense as far as this example is concerned. But what I'm trying to demonstrate here is you can certainly have other children inside of an LI, but you cannot have a anything else except an LI as the children of a UL. Hopefully that makes sense. That's a lot of weird words. So go ahead and invalidate. That's not going to validate and then move it outside of the UL and it will validate. So let's go ahead and validate it just to be sure. And there we go. All right, so let's finish off this page just for practice by adding an image of a peanut butter cookie. It doesn't make sense having a recipe without the image. So first thing I'm going to do is go to W3Schools. I think I already have it up, not W3Schools, um, Google Images, and I found a peanut butter cookie. Oh, that looks beautiful. I'm going to click on it. Perfect. Right click, and I'm going to choose Save Image As, and then remind you that we want to try and organize our uh, projects in a very clean way. So I'm going to go into my CIS 130. I'm going to go into my recipes. I'm going to right click and choose new folder. And I'm going to call this one image. And in my image folder, then double click, I'm going to rename this awful word to cookie, because that's easier for me to type. This is a JPEG. So I'm going to save that into that folder. Excellent. And so when I come back into my project, I now see that folder is there. And if I click on that folder, there's the cookie. So at the end here, I'm going to type in uh, my Emmet shortcut, IMG and tab. And the source, remember I have to accommodate for that folder. So I need to name the folder or reference the name of that folder, which is IMG to match the folder name, slash. And then I'm going to click on cookie. And then I'm going to tab and I'm going to alt uh, this is a peanut butter cookie. And then I'm going to come back into my web page and refresh. And there is my peanut butter cookie. That seems awful big. So I think I'll make it smaller. I'll give it a width of diff, width of uh, width equals. And we'll say 200 pixels. Remember, we don't put the pixel measurement here. We just put width equals. And now when I do this, that makes a lot more sense. All right, so we've got the first page of our recipe project, and that's our index page, and now we've got some lists going.